Fox Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. You set out to accomplish something, you're going to get encountered two type of people. People that's on the way and somebody that's in the way. Right now they're in our way. What are we going to do about it, man? Let's go out here. Like I say each and every week. Thirty-six-year-old London Fletcher of the Washington Redskins, his 217th consecutive game, about to take place. 75 degrees will hit 80 today. Temperature with winds up to 15 miles per hour. Mike Shanahan's team will start on defense as Miami won the toss. And they need to stop the bleeding, that being the Washington Redskins. Four consecutive losses, and, and look, Miami's a one and seven football team, but they've certainly been close. It could easily be four and four. Tony Sperano knows he got his best effort from his football team, Chris, last week in that big win over Kansas City. I think this is going to be a very tight and exciting football game. And Rex Grossman, who was battling pneumonia at one point, lost seven or eight pounds, was in the hospital, was pale, was weak, uh, said before in pregame warmups, he's healthier. Anxious to go, excited for this opportunity. And Matt Moore out extra early because the wind, he said it was breezier today than during the week in practice. Wanted to make sure he was comfortable throwing it. And this is only his 18th start, and he looked like he was throwing the ball fine to me. I was down there talking to him before the game as well. He's got such a, a better feel of Brian Dayball's offense. Was a late signing. Man, he was terrific in Kansas City last week with the three touchdowns. So Dan Carpenter is kicking off. Brandon Banks back for the Redskins, so Mike Shanahan's team instead starting on offense. Mike Shanahan has never lost five straight games. The Dolphins are trying to end a seven-game home losing streak, and we're underway in South Florida as Banks will down it, and the Redskins will take over on offense. So we'll get a look at Rex Grossman right away, starting from the 20-yard line. Six touchdowns, nine interceptions, lost two fumbles. Yeah, well, the ball security is the thing. I, I don't care who's starting at quarterback. Ryan Torrain and that offensive line have to provide something in the running game. You have the four consecutive losses. They run for 53 yards a game, Chris. That is not going to cut it. Of course, Maurice Hurt, the rookie, starting at left guard. It's Corey Lichtensteiger's been lost on injured reserve. Sean Locklear. Out at right tackle for Jamal Brown. Ryan Terrain with the carry and gets out near the 25 yard line. We'll see Roy Halu later in the game. Leonard Hankerson, University of Miami, the rookie draft pick with more than 50 friends and family here, getting his second straight start at wide receiver. Yeah, five catches for him. The guy's got big time heat. Now, this is where I talked about and heat being speed. This is where I talk about Rex Grossman being an asset for these young guys. There's going to be a lot of blitz pressure in this game, which means adjustment routes by the wide receivers. Rex Grossman should be able to help Hankerson in that area. On second down five, it'll be Terrain again. Slips one tackle, but is knocked down after maybe a yard of progress on that as we check the Dolphin defense Randy Starks up front probably the most consistent defender all season long yeah no question about it he, he is really starting to play well he went to the Pro Bowl last year the linebackers Cameron Wake having somewhat of a down year but still I think a work in progress those two inside guys Burnett and Dansby were outstanding against the Chiefs last week they get Vontae Davis back the corner with a hamstring he's missed four of the last six games with a hamstring and a discipline issue Chris, as you know, last week. And Roy Halu checks in on third and four. Pressure on Grossman, and he goes down. In for the sack, Kevin Burnett. Make that Carlos Dansby, not Kevin Burnett, excuse me. Well, and Dansby's been outstanding here. You look at the screen, and these guys bring the pressure. He's over to the side there on the left, and he just comes unblocked. Sean Locklear out there at right tackle for Jamal Brown. He blocked out. Dansby came in and Rex Grossman had about a second and a half before 58 was in his grill for the sack. Second sack of the season for Dansby, who's second on the team in tackles as Sam Rocca moves and Devon Bess from inside the Miami 40. 45 yards away from a touchdown as Matt Moore will have excellent field position. Matt Moore 
Stepping in, of course, after Chad Henney was injured earlier in the season. Four touchdowns, four interceptions, completing passes at about 61%. Yeah, and Brandon Marshall, his go-to guy. Most of their routes designed for Brandon clearly to be the first read. They're loving Mike Pouncey at center. Jake Long, the big left tackle, Chris, his best game by far last week against Tom Bahali and the Kansas City Chiefs. Right at the 45-yard line, rookie Daniel Thomas is the running back. And they bump into each other. The flip goes back to Matt Moore. Brandon Marshall is open, incomplete. A creative play to start that nets nothing. Well, and you got nothing to lose. A little razzle dazzle. Reggie Bush is out wide, so immediately as he comes in motion, they run a little re reverse action. Then it's a flip back to Matt Moore. And because of the bobble, first exchange to Reggie Bush good job there by D'Angelo Hall but because of the exchange problem as they tried to get it to Reggie it screwed the whole timing up of the play and they were late getting it to Brandon Marshall who was wide open early on that route so Reggie Bush on second down it will be third and about seven for the Dolphins and really it's something as, as minute as that Chris football is a, is certainly a game of, of details and you screw up the mesh point trying to get it to Reggie through the whole timing of the thing off and really probably left a touchdown on the field uh, defensively these guys are playing outstanding when you look at these three defensive linemen I think Bowen's playing at a Pro Bowl level the outside backers are, are clicking in the rookie Kerrigan and Brian Arakpo, Perry Riley getting the start in there for Rocky McIntosh. And then the secondary, especially down the middle, their safeties have had some issues. I expect Miami to attack that area. Hey, Redskins show pressure on third down. It's picked up, so Moore has time, middle of the field for Brandon Marshall. Inside the 20 of the Redskins. First down for Miami after a 26-yard connection. And that's where you love that 6-5 target in Brandon Marshall over the middle. Just some zone as you see the guys dropping off in zone. Now D'Angelo Hall gets spun one way. As soon as his hips turn to the outside, you see that Marshall cuts to the inside. D'Angelo Hall couldn't recover. It's a nice throw from Matt Moore. 47th catch of the year for Marshall. And Reggie Bush the back. Quick pass to Marshall. He'll lose yardage behind the 20. Harry Riley, who you just mentioned in for McIntosh, came up to make the stop. Yeah, fourth round pick a couple of years ago, talking to Jim Haslett yesterday. He said this guy deserves opportunity. We want to get him out there. We want to see what he can do. And I'll tell you the good thing if you're Perry Riley is you're stepping in and playing with a good defense already and, and being a young player. Um, that's a major asset in, in having 10 other experienced and good players around you. Defensive coordinator Jim Haslett, see what he dials up here on second and 14 for the Dolphins from the Redskins 21. Redskins have been great in the red zone this year, second in the NFL. And off to Bush, and there goes Reggie inside the 10 yard line. Laurent Landry ran him down from his safety spot. Bush came in. Averaging just under five yards a carry. Well, and they're learning. Brian Dayball is learning how to use Reggie Bush. They're going to influence, so everybody's going to block to the left. Watch the right guard. Just a little okey doke. They block down. Reggie misdirection cuts back. It was a wicked move right there on D'Angelo Hall to punch it down inside the 10 yard line. After a 12 yard run, it's now third and two, Miami. I'll tell you where you've been surprised about Reggie Bush, or at least some folks have. His ability to run between the tackles, Chris, has been terrific. Well, and he said he likes to do that. He can't live on that, but he enjoys doing it. More. Complete. That's Reggie Bush. First down. He runs, he catches. The Dolphins hope that he scores. First and goal. You know, it's interesting in, in talking to Jim Haslett. He said, how do you prepare for Reggie Bush in his new role? And, and Reggie, you know, loves being a running back first and all that stuff. He said, what we did is we went back and watched Cleveland over the last two years where Brian Dayball, the offensive coordinator of the Dolphins, was. And we watched how he used cribs, especially on the space plays. They feel like they got some good preparation indicators. Daniel Thomas has it, fakes a throw. Does throw and a flag goes down. 
Thomas recruited as an option quarterback. If that ball got back to the line of scrimmage, he can throw it out. He's outside of the pocket. That's not intentional grounding if it got back to the line of scrimmage. There's no intentional grounding on the play. The quarterback was out of the pocket. The ball was thrown beyond the line of scrimmage. However, personal foul, horse collar tackle, number 56, defense, measured half a distance to the ball, automatic, first down. Carl Jeffers all over the description, calling a horse collar on Perry Riley. Yeah, and there it is right there. You grab the back of the jersey, and as soon as those knees buckle, they're going to call that every time. That was smart, though. That was smart by Daniel Thomas, knowing he's out of the pocket, knowing the quarterback rules, knowing he needed to get it, get it out of bounds, and, and was able to throw it away. That was that was heads up. Impressive opening drive for the Dolphins. They're just inside the three. Fresh set of downs on first and goal. Brandon Marshall is out. Oh, on. what a mismatch! Throw the fade to Brandon Marshall. They're going to go to Reggie Bush, and there's not a lot of room in the middle. He keeps chucking. Heads up. It'll be second down. Did you see who they had out there lined up on Brandon Marshall? Brandon Marshall, a 6'5 phenomenal receiver. They had the safety read Dowdy out there at one on one coverage. Should have been an easy read for Matt Moore just to throw it up and let your guy go win. Reggie went into the pile, came out with a shoe off. Eighth play of this drive. Watch a rack boat number 98. You reach down, you grab a leg. These defensive players, you're trying to tear that leg off. He's going to end up tearing the shoe off. Dolphins inside the one on second and goal and we're going to have a timeout here Miami calling for it and we'll adjust the shoe return today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines find our fares online only at southwest.com Dolphins with a opening drive for them on a short field after their defense did the job they hope their offense can punch it in inside the 20 in the red zone and have not been good in that area but you go back to their last four trips down here in the last couple of games they've been four for four Reggie Bush on second touchdown. goal that is a touchdown Miami No problem with the red zone there. Well, they get the edge player down. Watch Brian Arakpo and Laron Landry in particular on the edge. Here comes Laron Landry crashing down. Richie Incognito is able to hit him. Arakpo got pinned down on the inside by Jake Long, and Reggie sees it, bounces, and he gets that kind of open space. There's no chance you're even going to touch him. And Dan Carpenter's extra point makes it seven to nothing. Miami with a short field. Reggie Bush's second rushing touchdown of the year. Today's game is sponsored by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Here we go. The Dolphins with Reggie Bush, who told us, still figuring out my identity here with this Miami team. And in the end zone, he figured it out. 7 to nothing Dolphins capping a drive after their defense did its job. Man, losing's been hard on him. I'm talking to him on Friday. He said, I'm not going to lie. It, it blows. <laughs> this has been horrible. Said it was like being in quicksand. Well, the Dolphins are climbing their way out of it after last week and so far. So Rex Grossman, who's yet to throw a pass, is trailing here in South Florida. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Lowe's. Lowe's never stop improving. By Taco Bell, think outside the bun. And by Chase, don't get shortchanged. Get your cash back with Chase Freedom. Redskin defense came into the weekend 13th in the NFL. And Miami on its first possession marches 45 yards in for a touchdown. So Rex Grossman with the second Redskin offensive possession. Ryan Terrain the back on first and 10 from the 20. Grossman's throw is complete. That's Leonard Hankerson. And there's a flag down. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 96. Defense. Lowered his head to punish the quarterback. 
15 yards will be added to the end of the play. Automatic. First down. That's on Paul Soliar. Wow, he hits Rex Grossman right in the shoulder here. Let's see if he hits him with his face mask or with the crown of his helmet. That is a tough call on Paul Soliar. Looks like he didn't lead with no, the No, he did not. And he did not hit Rex anywhere in the head. He did not dip his hat. Being a former defensive lineman, I don't know how you do it any different. I mean, if you're Paul Soliai, that was perfect, in my opinion. So with the That's penalty tough and the completion, Tim, it's a 32-yard gain all the way inside Miami territory. Grossman has it in the pocket and complete to Jabbar Gaffney. Inside the 30 down to the 27 yard line of the Dolphins. What a throw. Uh, and that's what I talked about in terms of driving it down the field. Watch him throw this just high enough over the backer who's going to reach for it. Carlos Dansby right over his hands and dropping it in the bread basket to Jabbar Gaffney. Look at Rex stand tall in the pocket and step into that. Absolutely perfect. Of all of Beck's 47 throws last week. Whoa, Daddy, what's that? Jared Odrick with his third sack of the year. And he's been coming on and they got him matched up on the rookie left guard Maurice hurt 79 the left guard watch Audrick just go right by him I mean he just gets in between he and Trent Williams and just powers through and again Rex can't even get to his back step That's the second sack where he can't even get to his back step before the guys in his face So Graham Gano who made a 59 yarder last week a Redskin record will try from 50 to natural grass field slight breeze that is not good. Redskins waste a scoring opportunity. The Dolphin defensive pressure with the big sack. Chris, you see offensive coordinator Kyle Shanahan sitting down and going over the pictures with Rex Grossman, who's off to a fine start, obviously, but has taken two sacks. Um, and there's Jared Odrick. That is a huge sack down in the scoring zone, really pushing them further away for the field goal opportunity. Not so sure about the play call, though. Third and two with a five-step drop, maybe not the right call. Reggie Bush will lose, and here comes the penalty flag. Bush has run four times for 16 yards already, including a touchdown. There are two fouls by the offense on the play. Illegal formation. The tight end was covered up on the end of the line. Holding number 68 offense. That penalty will be accepted. 10 yards. Repeat first down. Call accepted on Richie Incognito. It'll back Miami up. Excellent field position starting out. And now they'll be back at the 30 yard line. And a first and 20 for Matt Moore. Three out of four so far. Protecting a 7 0 advantage. Reggie Bush has it. The Redskins are there and another loss. They were ready for that. Perry Riley in on the tackle. Now he sniffed it out as that play was starting to develop. Perry Riley saw it the whole way. Watch 56 here. He's right in the middle of your screen. He's got Reggie Bush in man coverage. So you see he's stalking Reggie, stalking Reggie. He sees the screen develop. He just puts his foot on the gas and shoots his gun and gets right in there. And Reggie can't even turn around and. Perry Riley's already on him for the tackle for loss. So after a loss of seven, Daniel Thomas checks in, the rookie from Kansas State. A rack ball is in, the ball is out. Miami's on top of it to recover the fumble. Richie Incognito recovered it as Ryan Kerrigan caused it. And that'll be the matchup, Chris. It'll be a problem all day for the Miami Dolphins. Kerrigan is having an outstanding rookie season. He's going to go right around Mark Colombo here, who's certainly been the soft spot in the Miami offensive line. What a great job by Ryan Kerrigan, number one, at getting to the edge and, and having that dip and balance. But now watch him swat at the ball with his right hand. 
He's learning all the great ones in this league. You put your left hand on, secure the tackle, use the other hand to swat the ball out as he did right there. That's picture perfect. That's the rookie's fourth sack of the year, so the defensive adjustments for Washington have put Miami in a hole here on third and 31. High snap, but Moore has it. And that is intercepted by Kevin Barnes. Kevin Barnes. Down near the five yard line of the Dolphins. Matt Moore looked like his arm was hit as he released the ball. Yeah, I believe it was. Barry Cofield rushing from the nose guard position. They're in pre bent defense. They got guys 30 yards off the ball. Here comes the pressure from Cofield right there in the middle of your screen. Gonna throw a little arm over, then get his hands up and get right in Matt Moore's face. And what it forces Matt Moore to do, Chris, is throw off his back foot. Doesn't get a lot of zip on the ball, underthrows it. And Barnes comes down with the interception and then able to run it down to the five yard line. His second pick of the year. Hey! And the fifth interception for Moore so far this season. A first and goal from the five. Ryan Terrain. It'll be second and goal, Redskins. Washington has had trouble scoring. In fact, second worst in the NFL getting first quarter points. Well, they've been awful. 13 first quarter points in eight games. Absolutely brutal. One of the reasons Mike Shanahan made the change going back to Rex Grossman after being benched for the last three games. <laughs> Ryan Terrain. Dolphins create a wall to force a third and goal. You're just not going to push Big Soliai back. You're just not going to 350, 360 pounds, the big nose tackle. And Terrain looked like he ran into a brick wall. Four carries for Terrain, make that five carries and only nine yards. So the Dolphin defense doing the job there. Two tight ends and two fullbacks here. So you can guess where they're going. Well, don't go at Soliai. That would be my <laughs> advice. Terrain. Touchdown Redskins. There is a flag. They're going to get a hold on Darrell Young or Logan Paulson on the edge. Right in front Holden, of the line, Judge. Number 82, offense. 10 yards early. Repeat third down. As a former defensive lineman, you love to call it out when those guys hold. Well, and, and Chris, it's obvious anytime it's right at the point of attack. Watch the left side of your screen here. He's going to hold Jeremiah Bell. He's in trouble right from the get-go by coming off with wide hands. I mean, you can start out wide, but you've got to immediately reinsert your hands back inside. He wraps them up and then holds on to Jeremiah Bell. And That's Bell, an easy call for the line judge. Bell was quick to point it out. So a major miscue. Now third and goal from... And there's no reason to do that. That's a big line. tight end, Chris, against the safety. I and mean, he should be able to pick him up and plant him in the end zone with his hands inside on the chest plate. The officials put the ball at the 12, but it should be at the 11, or actually the right inside the 11 if you're going to assess the penalty. Now Grossman took a sack, forced a long field goal last time they were in good scoring position. They have to be careful here. Let's see if they get Fred Davis working. Here comes a flag. Washington called their first charge timeout prior to the delay of game foul. Did Mike Shanahan called that from the sideline? I assume that he did. Wow. So each team with two timeouts here in South Florida. Moments ago, it appears Mike Shanahan is talking to them about because they delayed the spot, the movement that some time ran off the play clock. I, I believe that's what it is. And he had to call the timeout or they were going to probably get a delay a game penalty. And really, if that is the case, Chris, that's on the officials and their delay to get the ball spotted because you were pointing it out. They spotted it on the 12. It should have been down inside the 11 and they finally got it right. But it took time. 
So now they sort it out. Redskins charging timeout on third and goal. They are going to reset the clock. That's a nice play by Vontae Davis, who's all over it. Pursues up and chops down Roy Halou. Not a great throw there from Rex, though. Behind the Halou, just kind of a desperation throw. Halou had to reach back for it and had really no chance to run. This will be a 26-yard field goal try for Graham Gano. Missed from 50 earlier in the quarter. And for the first time of the last four games, the Redskins score in the opening quarter. But the Dolphin defense dug in to force Grossman and the Redskins to a field goal. Next weekend on the FX Center to College Football Game of the Week, Charles Davis, Gus Johnson will be in Austin, Texas, Kansas State. The Wildcats take it on the Texas Longhorns. Two nationally ranked rivals will face off. The FX Saturday College Game of the Week in high definition. You'll see it on Fox. Check local listings for the start time in your area. Produced by Chuck McDonald. Yeah, those guys are fun to watch doing the, the college package there. I'll tell you, Rex Grossman, other than the two sacks, if you're just joining us here, has really been terrific. Been able to drive the ball down the field a couple of times. It's not had a lot of support out of the run game from, from Ryan Torrain. Of course, Kevin Barnes with a big interception to put him in position there for the field goal. Uh, but all in all, Rex looks, looks pretty solid. And you talked with Mike Nolan, Miami's defensive coordinator, about the change of quarterback and how that affected his unit. Yeah, I, I talked to Mike right before the game, and who is a very, very good coach, by the way. And, and I said, well, did you prepare for both quarterbacks? So, well, it's the same offense, with the exception of Rex Grossman gives him the ability to push the ball down the field in the passing game. Beck did not give him that ability. He goes, so we prepared for that. And then he didn't say it, but... My speculation and, and pure conjecture is you're going to see the heat start coming in terms of the pressure. Anyway, when you look at Miami's defense, their biggest issues, Chris, have come on the back end and their inability to cover while they try to do it with four, five, or six. So I think Mike Nolan has reserved the fact that he just got to set pressure to help those guys on the back end. So Clyde Gates with a chance to return. Leaping in the air, but knocked out around the 15 yard line. The number one kick coverage team in the NFL, the Redskins, doing its job. Matt Moore, who remember with the Carolina Panthers, but he was signed as a free agent by the Cowboys when Tony Sparano was part of that team, and Jeff Ireland is now in the Miami front office. So they knew right away when they wanted to bring a backup in here for Chad Henney, they knew what they had in Matt Moore. Well, and having said that, Chris, he didn't get signed until right before training camp. So. The lockout certainly affected him in his ability to really digest and understand the offense. He is starting to pick it up now, though, clearly. Daniel Thomas carries. And D'Angelo Hall with the tackle. I'll tell you what, Perry Riley is everywhere in this game. Getting the start out there for Rocky McIntosh. This dude is lighting it up. Rookie from, well, actually in his second year from LSU, drafted as you said in the fourth round. And McIntosh started out playing well. But well, he's in there now for London Fletcher. He, you see him calling the plays there for the defense? He's in there for London, so it's Rocky McIntosh and Perry Riley, man in the middle, as the inside backers. So Thomas remains the back. Second and seven. Matt Moore sets to throw. And behind Devon Besson incomplete. It'll bring up third down. Josh Wilson on the coverage. The Redskin defense came in 11th against the pass, 21st against the run. So far in the third down department, the Dolphins two out of three. 
Thomas remains the back. These are the situations where Moore has really, really struggled this year. Third and seven plus. Pass is caught by Devon Bass, who has a first down across the 30. And that is the end of the first quarter with the score. The Dolphins seven, the Redskins three, but Miami's on the move. Fox NFL Sunday continues after a break from your local Fox station. Temperature in the high 70s here in South Florida. Rex Grossman got the start for the Redskins as they only have a field goal. Reggie Bush a touchdown for the Dolphins off a big third down pass play on first and 10. Daniel Thomas carries. Tony Sparetto telling us that he likes to rotate the running backs. Reggie and Thomas, unless somebody gets the real, real hot hand. Yeah, that was a good run there by, by Daniel Thomas, and that's the way it's worked all year as he's rotated them. Look at uh, the first quarter stats there. Again, the Redskins have not been able to, to run the football. Third down, though, and this is a big one because the Miami Dolphins, worst in the National Football League, Chris, coming in. To the game today the Redskins have been good at getting people off the field on third down not the case today Thomas again fighting for what looks to be up near the first down marker over that yellow line is not official but the referee will let us know officially whether he got there or not and you can see his power now Daniel Thomas they gave up a lot to get him when you look at what they gave up to get him in the second round the draft pick he goes about 230 pounds and what Tony Sperano loves about him is he's a one read runner which means there's no dancing in the backfield he reads the the offensive line block immediately sticks seven cleats in the ground and go. gets downhill you could see how he could finish there he ejected London Fletcher backwards on the contact he got the first down and Matt Moore's in trouble gets rid of it and incomplete but here's where he struggles after giving him the props as a downhill runner. He struggles in pass protection. Well, Reggie Bush checked in on that. Play. Okay, so it's Reggie who struggled in pass protection. Good correction there, Chris. That's right, and Perry Riley puts and the Perry heat Riley just goes right by him, steps inside, and Reggie with a little play action fake could not recover on Perry Riley. And now Reggie Bush checks out on second and ten. Riley's making some noise. Two receivers on the left lower part of your screen for more. Charles Clay all the way out on the right. And that's complete. Brandon Marshall near another first down. And there's a flag down as well. He came in late. It's an 11 yard completion good enough for a first down pending the flag. They've been picking on the middle of the field. We talked about that with those safeties. Safety split that time. Matt Moore is that's an area that he is targeted. Reed Dowdy. Mishima goes no hot way. Unnecessary roughness on the play. The runner was still up. The hit is legal. First down. So no penalty. Otagwe is battling a toe injury and a knee problem. Reed Downey, Laurent Landry had a, an Achilles that was bothering him. So the Redskins aren't 100% healthy at safety. But Matt Moore is attacking that area Why? so far. So Marshall's third yeah. catch of the game, and it's a fresh set of downs for Miami. He turned, he turned just in time. But Anthony Fasano made the catch. The ball was there as soon as he turned. That was an outstanding catch by Fasano. Because that ball was well behind him, as you said. As he turned around, it was not out in front of him. Looked like the wind pushed that ball back behind Anthony Fasano, who's matched up on D'Angelo Hall. It's a terrific catch. A 28-yard gain, his 13th catch of the year. That's been one of the discussion points down in Miami. Why not target him more? That's only the 17th time he's been thrown to this season. I think a lot of it was he was helping out that right side. Pass protection as a blocker early in the year. First down inside the 20. Thomas tries to slip a tackle and falls forward. Landry up from his safety spot. Four carries so far for Daniel Thomas and four for Reggie Bush. 
And now both Reggie Bush and Daniel Thomas are in the game. And, and Reggie, usually when they do this, Reggie Bush is going to work out of the slot as a receiver, as he is right there. From the shotgun at second and ten, here comes Heat. He gets rid of it, and Kerrigan lays a hit on Thomas. And that's the right call. I mean, it was not a good throw. Matt Moore leads him up high, so Thomas has got to stretch for it, but Kerrigan cannot come blow him up like that foul, when he's defenseless. Personal foul, defense for helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact with a defenseless receiver. That penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal. Automatic, first down. Let's listen. Yeah, and that's not because Ryan Kerrigan's a rookie. You can't do that in a college game either. You can hear the clang and the clack up here. Okay. You can hit him. You can go hit him. You can hit him as hard as you want, but you, you can't lead with your helmet. You've got to hit him below the V of the neck so you don't get up in the helmet area. So from the 10 yard line, first and goal. Again, Reggie Bush and Daniel Thomas in the backfield, or I should say, as Reggie gets into the slot there in motion now. <laughs> Moore goes to Reggie. And Bush, maybe a yard before he goes out of bounds. And Laurent Landry and Reed Dowdy, they didn't fall for that one. Especially Laurent. Reggie fakes one way, sticks his foot in the ground, flares back out to the left, and Laurent Landry saw it the whole way. Man, he's a dynamic player. That's a specimen. Look how that guy's built. So now the nine yard line, second down goal. Reggie with the only touchdown so far in this game. Bush remains in. And Reggie Bush has it. And near the goal line goes out of bounds inside the two. Reed Downey ran him out. Perry Riley, you're going to see him to the left. He's got Reggie. You see that Reggie? When Reggie Bush is offset like that, the linebacker who's facing him really has no chance if he ends up crossing back over the formation. So you see Perry Riley right there. He's already behind in chase mode because of the speed of Reggie Bush. So it's got to be the pursuit or the other players of the Redskins that get Reggie out of bounds before he gets in the end zone. But when he offsets in the backfield like that, Chris, he is really, really hard to stop as a receiver. Especially for linebackers and man covers, they almost have no chance. Third down and goal. Quickly for the end zone, and Brandon Marshall. Out of bounds. No catch. Josh Wilson, excellent coverage on the 6 5 frame of Brandon Marshall. Ball probably comes out a little bit late, which led Brandon Marshall all the way to the sideline. See, if that ball is thrown out a little earlier, he's got a chance to be closer inbounds away from the sideline so he can tap his toes down. So a field goal try of 21 yards. And Carpenter. For the Dolphins. Gives them a seven-point lead here at home. Place their Toronto win. For the first time in eight games. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by the Miller Lite Home Draft. Taste greatness. By the Droid Razor. Thin is no longer frail. Only at Verizon. And by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Dolphins with a 10-3 lead here in the second quarter, along with Tim Ryan, Chris Myers. Glad to have you watching the NFL on Fox, a doubleheader Sunday. And I know that Redskin fans will be interested in that giant 49er matchup. And what a clash, the Lions and the Bears. Yeah, great games in the NFC. I and mean, there's some really good matchups. And 49ers, are they for real? I think they are. Six straight. And, of course, the Giants have won six to seven. That's going to be a great game. So the kick goes through the end zone. And the Redskins and Grossman come back out to the 20-yard line. Trailing 10 3. Redskins on offense, first and 20, and it hadn't looked pretty so far. Well, they've been in a funk for over a month, this offense. They really have. They've got 34 yards in total offense in this game. They've been doubled up in almost every category by the Miami Dolphins. Only 11 plays. They got to be able to run the football. 
Grossman, who's four out of four so far, is going deep. That's Davis. And he didn't hold on. Got to come up cleanly with the football. Yeah, well, he didn't finish the process is what happened. And Rex Grossman rolls out to the right. And you look to the left of your screen here. The receivers are going to both run in. And now Fred Davis from the other side of the formation. Man coverage against Burnett. And he doesn't finish the process of the catch. As he's going down with it. He's got to roll over and completely finish the process before that ends up being a completion. That ball was underthrown, though, by Rex Grossman. Second down, 10. Anthony Armstrong checks Ready. in at receiver for Grossman. Ready. Brian Terrain has it. Picks up four. And Dansby on the tackle. And, and we all know, if you've watched Mike Shanahan and the two Super Bowls in Denver back-to-back, -back, and everything he's done, it builds off of their running game. And you look at their last four losses, Ryan Terrain has disappeared. 11 rushes for 11 yards in the last three games played coming into today. And they've run for 53 yards of contest. And when you've got a good defense whoa, whoa, that's not giving whoa. up a whole bunch of points, it's not like you're playing catch-up and you're one-dimensional. There's no excuse. That run game's got to get picked up. So Roy Halou checks in. He's caught a pass but hasn't run the ball on third down. That's complete for a first down. David Anderson just picked up from the Houston Texans with the first down catch. And Rex delivered that with Jason Taylor bearing down on him with a big hit. Watch Rex just staring down the receiver as he's getting hit by Jason Taylor. David Anderson, though, you, you, you got to like his addition because he knows the offense. Kyle Shanahan. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just plug him in and he knows the plays. That's a huge advantage. After a 14 yard pickup, the Redskins on the move. Terrain. And the Dolphins have that number figured out. Terrain missed at that time. You know, this zone running game where you block, everybody blocks one way, it really presents, Chris, a lot of opportunities for the cutback run in the cutback lane. Terrell Davis made, made a living on it. Look to the right side of your offensive line. Play designed to go left, but the cutback lane is going to be right, and there ends up being a huge crease right there. And Terrain just doesn't see it. He came in averaging over four yards a carry. He's averaging two so far. Grossman complete. First down at the 45. That's tight end Logan Paulson in the Miami territory. Love the ball location there. Rex threw him open. He had a defender on the inside of him. And Rex throws it to the outside where Paulson can spin around and go get it. That was nice. Remember Chris Cooley out for the year injured. Santana Moss with the injured hand at the receiver spot. They hope to have it back in a couple of games as Terrain carries, fighting to get inside the 41. And you got to keep running. I mean, look, the, the Dolphins are going to present a big challenge in their run defense. I, I, I would think in talking to Mike Nolan and talking to these guys, Chris, and we talked to them on Friday, that's the area where they've been the best and the most consistent, up front with their defensive line. And their ability to really limit hey, the big explosion plays in the running game has been solid all year. Ready. Ready. Ryan Terrain. It'll be third down for the Redskins. And Miami on defense, and you mentioned it when we came on the broadcast, they need some takeaways. Only two interceptions so far. A defense that has two sacks today. Well, they've got four takeaways all year. And that's the worst in the NFL. And it's not a new problem. I think if you go back and look at his defense, even back to last year, statistically, they were really good in every category, with the exception of takeaways, which was a franchise low. They won't break that record this year unless they pick up the pace. Third and six. Wrong, wrong. Wrong, Lou. Intercepted. Vontae Davis. 
And there is an interception from a Dolphin cornerback. That deserves a while. Yeah, that was good timing right there. They haven't had one in five games. You set them up to get one. I think Leonard Hankerson's going to blame you because he fell down on the route. You know, they script plays on offense. We scripted that on defense. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Chrysler, imported from Detroit. Rex Grossman suffering his 10th interception of the season. And this one's not on Rex. This is a heck of a throw. Here comes the all-out blitz. Jeremiah Bell off the edge. Rex throws it perfectly, but Hankerson, as you see to the right of your screen, falls down. He tries to make that in-cut, then an out-cut, slips and falls down. That ball was perfectly located. Bonte Davis ended up being the beneficiary of the receiver falling down, getting the interception. Davis from Dunbar High School in Washington, D.C., his first interception of the season, sixth of his career, as Reggie Bush carries on first down. So the Washington turnover puts the ball back in the hands of the Miami offense. Six minutes to go in the first half. The only touchdown, a run from Reggie Bush. Kyle Shanahan with Rex Grossman. Davis had disciplinary issues, also was battling a hamstring injury, but certainly has the physical skills at that position. All day long. Very, very gifted physically. Both of those corners are, but their issue, and Sean Smith too, is their issue has been ball skills when the ball's in the air, they haven't been able to go up and get it. That time he was able to finish and get Look at this formation. The pitch to Reggie Bush. The Redskins run him out of bounds and Lex Hilliard and Daniel Thomas with Reggie in the backfield. So it'll bring up a third down for the Dolphins. Matt Moore, 9 out of 14 so far in the game. He does have the interception. Two long drives for the Dolphins producing points. No, right here. He's at the end. Yeah, Grant Marshall on the inside. There he is. Pressure, and he gets it to Marshall, who's got a first down. Look at him run with the football. Inside the 30 of the Redskins. Boy, that brings back visions of the old Denver days when he was going up over 100 yards as a receiver. Watch him. He's to the inside of this trio here, and he's just going to bubble out. And he's going to get blocks. I mean, you got off coverage by Kevin Barnes, and you're able to get Clay and, and Bass getting some blocks. And Brandon Marshall, when he was in Denver, that's what he was great at getting the short completions and then getting huge yards after the catch. Those numbers have been down as a Miami Dolphin. But that guy, that's what he's capable of doing now. Really good. Reggie Bush carries. Mike Shanahan drafted Brandon Marshall while in Denver. Said he knew right away. He's going to a high pick. But he had a lot of talent. Now the guy's been a beast in, in pro football. As I said, three years in in Denver, up over 100 yards. Uh, Mike Shanahan always talked about, as you said, knew right away. But his yards after the catch, he said it was unbelievable. The guy turns into a big running back when he gets the ball underneath. And Marshall said, I, I owe him a lot. He gave me my chance. He said, I love that man. Well, he's trying to beat him today. Second and 13. <laughs> is incomplete the pressure by Kerrigan on Matt Moore. Let's get a game break. Here's Kurt Menefee. Well, John Skelton's four of 12 passing for Arizona. One of those, no, well, it was to the wrong team. Sante Samuels, 20 yard interception return. The Eagles only score, the only score for other team. It's 7 nothing right now in the second quarter, Chris and Tim. All right, thanks, Kurt. Looks like Matt Moore was holding his hand. There may be a Injury will keep an eye on that. Facing third down. Now, so far, four out of six in this game. Impressive on third down. Let's see what they can do here. For the tight end, Fasano. Let's take a look on the previous play. Well, and Ryan Kerrigan is just wearing out the right tackle, Mark Colombo. So Kerrigan's going to come flying in. And you see right there, he hits him right on the front of the helmet, Matt Moore, as he's releasing the football. And right away, I was watching him as he rolled over and popped up. He'll start checking his right hand. 
The running backs are not very good in pass protection. That last play, the overthrow, Daniel Thomas just no chance of blocking up the blitzing London Fletcher. He hit for 21, Carpenter from 49, and misses left. That's where Graham Gano, the Redskins, missed from 50. So we're still standing at 10 3. Dolphins lead the Redskins. Coming up in December on Fox, two of the most storied conferences in college football culminate their seasons with two epic championship games. It's the first time in their history. And Fox Sports brings it to you on back to back nights the Pac 12 championship Friday, and then on Saturday, the Big Ten championship December 3rd. Ready? On first down, Grossman's pass is hauled in. That's Hankerson for a first down in Miami territory. So far, seven out of nine for Grossman. Fred Davis has no catches. Yeah, he, he's been outstanding, that being Rex. And interesting because he's driving the ball down the field is why I don't think Fred Davis has the catch. He had the one where he looked like he had it down the field and then rolled over and didn't finish the process. But with John Beck out there, you think about the last three games, it was all Halu on the checkdowns, and it was all Fred Davis in the quick outlet. Rex is looking other places, trying to drive the ball down the field. And here he goes again, inside the 35-yard line. There's Fred, right on cue. His first catch of the game. Man, you're good. You're good. <laughs> I, I, oh, my God. <laughs> you, you got a gift. Well, you let me see all the plays ahead of time. But at least he's, he's getting the ball downfield, and that's what Mike Shanahan wants. Well, and he, look, he stands tall in the pocket, has his feet under his shoulders, and he's driving the ball accurately in between the numbers. Hey, and that's frankly why he's out there today. Hey, Beck brought none of that to the table for the Redskins offensively. Here comes the flag. Brigada 16 on the pass play inside the Miami 35 will check the infraction. Encroachment number 94 defense five yard penalty remains first down. So the penalties on Randy Starks each team with two timeouts. This will push the Redskins to the 28 yard line look and the Dolphins have been ascending over the last couple of weeks but when I look at the Redskins this is a must win for them Chris period I mean you look at the division you look at where they are record wise in this game against the one and they have got to win this football game Ryan terrain carries Redskins started out three and one now they're three and five trying to stay in the NFC East race slugging it out here in South Florida we've reached the two minute warning This telecast is copyrighted by the NFL for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this telecast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the NFL's consent is prohibited. Rex Grossman got the start today after getting benched three games ago. Now that's where John Beck is after he had started through three straight losses. Well, the right move by Mike Shanahan, no question about it. Rex could be eight for nine if Fred Davis doesn't drop that one that was right in his, right in his hands. Or nine for ten, excuse me. On second down with time. That's the fullback, Darrell Young. And that'll force a third down as Colomisi made the play for the Dolphin defense. Now Rex has been very precise. Again, you had the drop by by Fred Davis. He's thrown to I believe now seven different receivers. As Darrell Young gets that one right there. And I promise you that quarterback rating looks a whole heck of a lot better. If Leonard Hankerson doesn't slip and fall down and that interception is picked up by Vontae Davis. Well, that is what Mike Shanahan is worried about. Turnovers. Grossman must eliminate those on third down. They lost three. So third and six. That's high and incomplete. David Anderson, the receiver, it was not a good throw. Not a good throw, but one David Anderson could have caught. And definitely high and up to the left. But David Anderson did get two hands on it. And that's the area where Rex has been attacking now, right down in between the numbers. This one pretty much right on the numbers, just inside the numbers, could have been caught. And I'll tell you what, Gano, from with the wind behind him here, he was banging 63 yarders in the pregame by five to seven yards through the uprights. And this will be a 47 yard try. And the other way, the wind has created problems for both place kickers. Snap hold and got it. 
So still no touchdowns from Rex Grossman and the Washington offense, but they are within four. And look at what Rex has done here in the first half. Just standing tall in the pocket, driving the ball, rotating those hips. Look at that lower body rotation. That's how you throw the ball in this league. And again, look at all of them down the field vertically. Not a lot of check downs, not a lot of horizontal throws. He is striking the Miami Dolphins, Chris, between the numbers. It looks really good. You got to be happy for him. And I listen, I was talking to him in pregame. He had a smile from ear to ear. He, he said, I'm just so glad that I've got another opportunity to, to get out here and play. And just much, much better than John Beck has been over the last three starts. And he, he handled his benching like a pro. Then he got pneumonia and said he was so sick that game against the Carolina Panthers. He had to go to the hospital just to try and feel better. And it took a couple of weeks to get his strength and energy back. And, and you know what? I, I think if you looked at Rex two and a half, three months ago, you would have saw a guy that was 20 pounds heavier than he is now. And you, remember, we talked to him earlier in the year about that. When we did the Ram game. And the, never a silver lining to pneumonia, but it did force him to lose about another six or seven pounds. He was already down 12 or 13 pounds just through conditioning. So he's a he's a better conditioned athlete right now. And Mike Shanahan was questioned this week, and understandably so, from the Washington media. Hey, you put your reputation on these two quarterbacks back in training camp. He's tried them both, and the Redskins trying to dig out of a four-game losing streak. Clyde Gates. Watches the kick sail through the end zone. So we'll come out to the 20 yard line. Matt Moore and the Dolphin offense on first down. Let's check in with Kurt Menefee. Coming up on the Visa Halftime Report, we'll have scores and highlights from a busy week 10 in the NFL, including the Steelers trying to pass Cincinnati in the standings and the Cowboys trying to catch Buffalo in the wind cup. That's all coming up on the Visa Halftime Report. I think mine was better than yours. It was. Yeah. Well, I'm injured. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They always have fun, whether it's pre, post, the OT. So stick around for the Visa halftime report. Two timeouts remaining for the Dolphins. See how they plan on first down. Reggie Bush. Maybe a yard. In the NFC East, the Cowboys are winning by 21 over Buffalo. Reds lost his shoe again. And the Eagles, who have the same number of wins as the Redskins, currently tied with the Cardinals. Boy, they have really put themselves in a hole, haven't they? And, I mean, they are going to have to get red hot and catch fire if they're going to get themselves into the postseason. And the Giants play later today out in San Francisco, America's Game of the Week. It's a doubleheader day on Fox. Can't wait for that one. And the Redskins fans know from watching these Redskins against the 49ers last week, the 49ers defense, they are big time for real and the fans aren't happy here how about this shouldn't you try to at least get something if you're the Dolphins two timeouts they're letting the clock run we've got an offensive line coach as the head coach I think he's saying you know what let's keep our quarterback clean and get into halftime with a four point lead Thomas carries and that's how Tony Sperano and the one win Dolphins will play it that's the end of the first half of the score of the Dolphins 10, the Redskins 6. Fox NFL Sunday continues after this Visa halftime report and messages. The Dolphins try to build off of their first win of the year. They scored first on a Reggie Bush touchdown. They have a 10-6 lead, and they get the football here as we get ready to start the third quarter. Follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. Breezy and warm, Tim Wright, Chris Myers. Hope you're enjoying the NFL on Fox. And Rex Grossman getting the start again for Washington despite being behind in the game. He's played well. Yeah, and, and he really has played well, as we said in the first half, driving the ball down the field, getting vertical in the passing game, Chris. And he's been under some pretty decent pressure, too. Uh, haven't gotten sacked two times. Haven't said all that, they're one dimensional offensively. They've got to be able to get the run game going. I know Miami's good at, at, at run defense. But they've got to stick with it. And we haven't hardly seen any of Ryan Hallou in this football game, which has surprised me a little bit. I talked to Matt Moore before the game and said, with Rex Grossman starting for the other team, does that affect? He said, well, maybe we'll be a little bit more aggressive offensively. They haven't been so far despite the lead. Well, he, he really hasn't been able to get to his second read. Brandon Marshall's got four receptions in the football game. Devon Best has one. The other wideouts have zero. Fasano's got one good play. So it's mostly been Brandon Marshall and Reggie Bush in the passing game. Tell you where they need to get better is, is number one they need to run the ball better which has paced them over the last couple of weeks certainly in their win last week uh, and then in their pass protection especially with their running backs Jim Hazlitt the defensive coordinator of the Redskins 
has sent some inside pressures with Perry Riley, with London Fletcher, and very simply this, the running backs have not been able to pick it up and help out Matt Moore. The Dolphins finally get an interception from one of their cornerbacks. The defense has played very well. Well, today. they have, and again, just absolutely stymieing the run. You, you look at here. I mean, there's just nowhere to go for Ryan Torrain. That doesn't mean they need to get away from it. They got to stick with it. And maybe Torrain needs to open his eyes a little bit in terms of some of the vision points. And then there's some of the pressure I was talking about on Rex Grossman. And then watch Hankerson. This one's not on Rex Grossman. It's a very good throw under pressure. Leonard Hankerson on the outcut just slips and falls down. And a much needed, a much needed turnover for the Miami Dolphin defense. Four on the year. That's their fifth and their first interception in the last five games. And you were quick to point out a, a desperate, almost a must win for the Redskins, giving their, their record and where they are in the, if they have any playoff hopes or division hopes in the NFC. Yeah, and look, there's a lot of football left, and we're only at the halfway point, but you, you look at the division, you look at the New York Giants, I think the Dallas Cowboys are surging. They've got a soft spot in their schedule right now. They're crushing the Buffalo Bills right now. Philadelphia is going to be a problem. You look at the rest of the schedule on top of all that for the Redskins, it's brutally tough. This is a must win today. Again, I'll say it all day long here in the second half. They've got to win this game considering their schedule and what's left in division. A reason that Mike Shanahan went back to Rex Grossman along with some of the others you listed. This the stadium, the, the scene of Mike Shanahan's second Super Bowl win when he was the head coach of the Broncos following a back-to-back -back to beat the Falcons after defeating the Green Bay Packers. And he hopes that Rex Grossman can rally his team. We get ready to start the third quarter. I'll tell you one thing, Jake Long has done a pretty darn good job against Brian Arakpo. I'll tell you that right now. Matchup we should certainly try to keep our eyes on here in the second half. Redskins with one sack. Clyde Gates is going to bring it out. And as we mentioned in the first half, the number one kickoff coverage team in the NFL coming in. The Redskins do their job. Here, let's check in down on the sideline with Jamie Maggio. Jamie? All right, Chris, thank you. Well, I spoke with Mike Shanahan after that. He said he's been pleased with Rex Grossman's play so far. He said, though, as a team, they need to get those third downs and they'd be in a lot better shape in this ball game. As for Tony Sperano, well, he said Rex Grossman is in a rhythm. They need to disrupt that, and if they can't, they'll be in better shape. They also plan to uh, capitalize on offense. They said we can't settle for field goals if we want to win it. Guys, back up to you. That's a great point, Jamie. The, the Redskins, one of seven on third down conversions in the first half. On first down here, Reggie Bush. You saw they want to get the running game going. They try it with Reggie. You saw the breeze in Jamie's report from down on the field, and that's had something to do with a couple of missed field goals in this game by kickers that are certainly capable. Otherwise, the score might be a little bit different. There's Jake Long. Oh, he, he listen, yeah, number one overall pick in the draft. He was on fire last week against Tom Bahali and the Chiefs, and he is really starting to find his groove really got no preseason action because of his injuries his first real snap in game action was against the Patriots in the opener he's found his way and he's playing on standing Matt Moore pressure the ball is out that was fumbled by Matt Moore and Ryan Kerrigan knocked it loose once again his second force fumble of the game recovering for the Redskins was Stephen Bowen and nobody blocks Ryan Kerrigan once again. Watch everybody turn down. And Reggie Bush releases on a little swing route. And Ryan Kerrigan just comes scot free and again swatting the ball out as he gets there. That's sack number five on the year. You saw Reggie Bush there flaring out to the right. Anthony Fasano, the tight end, released who Ryan Kerrigan was lined head up on. And those are the kind you love as defensive linemen. You don't have to do anything but run at the quarterback and, and knock 25. it out. Second sack today. Second forced fumble and today, Chris. Redskins on the attack with Ryan Terrain fake. Grossman throw. That's hauled in by Terrain, who goes out of bounds. This is an opportunity for the Redskins to try and get into the end zone. They settled for three too often, as we heard in the report here. And if you want to be a team that ends a losing skin, you got to take advantage of the Matt Moore fumble and punch it in. Absolutely, down here in the scoring zone. Near the 20-yard line, getting the red zone, you, you've got to get a touchdown. Leonard Hankerson, leading receiver for the Redskins, the rookie from the University of Miami, out to the left. Ryan Terrain cuts back. Here's a penalty flag as he gets down to the 14-yard line. They might end up getting Paulson again out here on the edge, the tight end. 
Holding, number 71. Offense, 10 yard penalty. Repeat second down. Trent Williams says, that wasn't me. Fourth penalty accepted on the Redskins. It'll back him up, and you might be right, Tim. Well, watch the tight end, 82. He's lined up right next to Trent Williams, 71, out on the edge. They get a little double team working. Yeah, they just called it on Trent Williams. They absolutely did. That's a tough call. So Roy Halou checks into the game for the Redskins. Averaging four and a half yards a carry. That's twice now. We've seen good runs to the left side that have been nullified because of a holding call. One of them was a touchdown. From the 30. Pass for Hankerson. Caught out of bounds. Just at the 20 yard line. So that'll bring up a third down. Rex just looks so much more poised than John Beck has looked over the last three games. And, and you just watch the route here. Just as Hankerson makes his out cut, the ball is distributed on time. And the timing's absolutely perfect, about two yards inbounds. So Hankerson can get his feet down. Rex looks really, really comfortable and is a big, big asset to all those young players he's playing with, including that rookie Ryan Hankers, or, uh, Hankerson. And Roy Halou, who is in on third and six. Get him, get him. Run, run. Here comes pressure. It's picked up. Grossman's throw for Jabbar Gaffney. First down, Washington. And Grossman goes down to the turf at the 30. And another great timing route. I mean, he just hits his back foot. One hitch is the quick bounce. And then he releases the ball. Gaffney turns. And the ball's right there on the money. Here's the pressure coming at Rex Grossman. Watch, there's the hitch. There's the throw. Taking a big shot. And watch how perfect this ball is. Doesn't get any better, Chris. And Gaffney hauls it in. Starts putting the pressure on. So it's oh, first oh. and goal, Washington, oh. from the nine-yard line. Oh. Grossman underneath to Davis, and that doesn't go anywhere. Starks was right on the scene. Randy Starks wasn't taking the bait. It was like three fakes. Rex looked left, the fake left, then looked right, fake left, and a little razzle dazzle of Fred Davis underneath. Starks said, uh uh, not taking the cheese on this one. They may have lost a yard on that. Second and goal, Redskins. They got here after the fumble recovery. And they got the ball to start the second half. So that was a six yard loss. We got rope, rope. Run, run, run. Underneath, complete. That's Hankerson down inside the five yard line. Third and goal. Nice little route by Leonard Hankerson. He's out to the wide side to the right. And watch him just sift inside. He's going to stop now. He's going to take it. You know what guys do there is they stop and they they think the defender, and that time it was Will Allen. Look, I'm stopped right here. The quarter tap quarterback takes a big snapshot of him like he's going to deliver it. Then they take off and continue their route, and Will Allen couldn't recover. Hankerson, that was impressive. Excuse me, Hankerson on the left side on third down and goal. In the corner, juggle Fred Davis. No. And the Dolphin defense takes a stand. Hey, that's good work by Kevin Burnett. Look at him just turn and locate the ball. Really, a, just some subtle contact, just enough, doesn't draw the flag, but really the impetus and the momentum of that subtle contact right there pushes Fred Davis out of bounds. So a golden opportunity for the Redskins to get a touchdown. Graham Gano hopes they settle for three at least from 23 yards. And that's good. Washington inches to within a point of the Dolphins. Tony Sperano, despite the turnover, his defense does its job. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. By the Ford F-150, the only truck available with EcoBoost. By Visa, more fans go with Visa. And by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Here we go. Here at South Florida, the Dolphins protecting a one-point lead. Fans anxious for their 
Second win of the year. Graham got out three out of four field goals for the Redskins, and Clyde Gates anxious for a chance to return. And the Dolphin offense will come out to the 20 yard line. Can the AFC Offensive Player of the Week come through? Matt Moore, the offense, straight ahead. Here in South Florida, it's a 10-9 Dolphin lead on a low-scoring Sunday around the National Football League, and no exception here with the way the defenses have played. Matt Moore brings out Miami's offense with Daniel Thomas, the running back. Neutral zone infraction, number 91, defense. His movement into the neutral zone caused a reaction by the offense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. It's on Ryan Kerrigan, who has two sacks, and, of course, created a fumble opportunity moments ago. I'm not ago. sure that he flashed into the neutral zone. Let's see if he gets across the line of scrimmage or just enough of a flinch. Mm, wow. Wow. First and five for the Dolphins. Of course, if you flash and you are in the neutral zone when the offensive player moves, and then it is going on the defense, just as they called there. From the pocket, that's part line. And a first down catch. If they move the pocket enough, that's something that worked well for Matt Moore. Well, I, I, I listen, it, it, you're going to have to start moving the pocket a little bit if you can't block up the pressures. But Matt Moore, to me, has been fine. I mean, he's 11 of 18 in the football game, and the, the problem has been pro uh, protection breakdowns, whether just not blocking a guy or the running back not being able to step up and stop the pressure from the inside linebackers. After that completion, first and 10. That was low intended for Brian Hartline. And Josh Wilson was covering. Yeah, that ball got tipped is what happened, Chris. That ball got tipped right at the line of scrimmage. Matt Moore, I'll tell you what he does do. He moves around himself, and he's able to create some little space in terms of pocket awareness. He steps up in the pocket right here in, in between the tackles, and Kedrick Golston looked like got his hand up and got his hand on it, and it forced that ball to carry him up in the air and, and end up short. But he does, he's really, for only his 18th start, he's been in the league for a while. Matt Moore is pretty clever on his pocket presence and moving around inside the pocket. They're going to run it to Thomas, who slips through, and it'll be third down. You know, since the, you've talked about passes being thrown quickly, a lot of batted balls this year. Everywhere around the National Football League. Look, with all the spread fast pass that we're seeing, this is the great equalizer. This. I mean, this neutralizes the quarterbacks getting the ball out quick. You know, when, when I was playing, it was, okay, you got to get there in three seconds if you're going to get to the quarterback. Well, now that number, because of the spread fast pass, has been reduced to about two, two and a half seconds. So defensive no. linemen have been able to neutralize no. that, Chris, by getting batted balls, a bunch of them around the league. Third and five. And Matt Moore wants timeout. And I'll tell you what happened is they threw Brian Arakpo over on the other side and matched him up there with Ryan Kerrigan. Matt Moore saw it. He said, no thanks. Time out. Dolphins have improved on third downs today. They need to convert here, protecting a one-point lead. You need to find Devon Bass. Hartline jumps off sides and now puts him in third and ten. Ten. Mm. And that was after. Number 82. Offense, five-yard penalty, remains third down. That was after a timeout. Now, for the Dolphins, they're one of the least penalized teams in the NFL, tied for second fewest coming into the game. That's the fourth accepted. And unacceptable. I mean, after a timeout, and you get out there, and it's not like the stadium's, uh, you know, loud crazy that he couldn't hear anything. He's tipped in looking at the snap count. It's a mental breakdown. Devon Bass, I'm telling you, 15 is the guy they got to find. And there is Devon Bass. In Redskin territory. Analyze this. Analyze that. <laughs> like I said, you're good. A 22 Bass game. inside receiver. He's got inside leverage. Already he takes it away from Kevin Barnes. 
Just by that little jab step outside, he is the best route runner on this offense. And that is only his second catch of the afternoon. So with all the rolled coverage typically in the help going to Brandon Marshall, this guy's such a good route runner, had well over 70 catches last year. Chris, they've got to get him more involved yep. in the offense. And what a great personal story. Working his way as a walk on at Hawaii yeah. after losing a scholarship. Yeah. A fan favorite for the Dolphins, Devon Betts. And here is Daniel Thomas. And the Redskins swarm to push him backwards. Good job there by D'Angelo Hall. And he just forced that baby right back inside. Congratulations, D'Angelo Hall and his wife. Twins delivered, and everybody's happy and healthy in the family on Friday. Go, D. Hall. Good for you, man. Second down nine for the Dolphins. Look at that. Neither team running the ball, and, and Washington has not been able to run it. The surprise is the Redskins have not been able to stop the run today. They're doing it. Matt Moore's in trouble. He gets out of it and gets inside the 40. <laughs> he, he talked about pocket management and how, how well they coached that here with the Dolphins. And again, this is the pocket presence that I'm talking about. And you're just saying pocket management because they get good blitz pickup just enough from Daniel Thomas on Perry Riley. And then I promise you, Matt Moore can't break five flat in the 40. But he makes every step count. <laughs> he steps up and then he rolls out to the left. And now a little okey doke on a rack poke. Uh, right there back inside. You didn't see his slide. He was a third baseman, actually drafted in the Angels organization. On third and four. <laughs> Blitz is picked up wide open is Brandon Marshall. Boy, yeah. Ryan, blitz pickup, but Brian Arapo to the left of your screen is going to drop into coverage. So they're sending D'Angelo Hall from the front side, and they just split the safeties. I mean, the safeties end up Reed Dowdy and Laron Landry end up being deep half players. Arapo is playing like that cover two middle linebacker where he's got to sink down the middle of the field. And that's a fine throw from Matt Moore over the top. A 26 yard gain. Fifth catch for Marshall. Thomas. Carries. And for Brandon Marshall, only two touchdowns this year. Dolphin fans have counted up to five drops in the end zone. They expect more out of him when you get down near the goal line. Well, he, he's only had five touchdowns as a Miami Dolphin. And, and for his talent, his skill level, and that's and it's not as you just said, it's not like he hasn't had opportunity. The, the, the ball has been delivered to him down in the end zone. He's had some significant drops at key times this year. Thomas. It'll be third down. I'm sure Dolphin fans are saying, oh, wait a minute, we get down there with the throw, and now we're playing it safe offensively. So it looks like the Redskins will be guessing pass here for Matt Moore. From the 10 yard line. And we have Goldston, the injured player, being helped off the field. One of those guys involved in the defensive line rotation. 5.14 to go in the third quarter here. Dolphins with a 10 9 lead and trying to get more, facing a third and six. Part of our Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader in America's Game of the Week, Giants and 49ers. Only one defeat for the 49ers. They're one of the six teams that have already matched oh. or bettered their record, their win total from last year. At this point, we're just moving into the second half of the season. And no question in my mind that Jim Harbaugh is the NFL coach of the year through the first half of the season. They will smash you, Chris, with old school football. Frank Gore over. 100 yards, five consecutive games. They're throwing the ball to offensive linemen, defensive linemen. Everybody's gone spread, throw the ball. Jim Harbaugh is going old school, heavy tight end packages. We're going to run it down your throat. Tenth play of the drive for the Dolphins. The way this game is going, if you get a touchdown, you figure you're in good shape. Third and six. High in the end zone, incomplete. Brian Hartline was the closest receiver. 
Miami will settle for a field goal try. Yeah, Matt Moore late on that throw because Hartline was open. Reed Dowdy and Josh Wilson had a little mix up in coverage, and Tony Sperano knows it. But because the ball came out late, you now watch to the left of your screen here. You're going to see Hartline get behind Reed Dowdy. But because the ball came out late, Matt Moore has to sail it over the top in fear of getting it intercepted. So Dan Carpenter's 28 yard try is good. Miami back to a four point lead here in the third quarter, leading 13 to 9. Tomorrow on Fox Television's biggest adventure. It's all new. Loyalty is put to the test when a son has to choose between betraying his family or saving the girl he left behind. Don't miss a thrilling all new Terra Nova tomorrow at 8 Eastern, 7 Central. Only on Fox. Matt Moore, 13 out of 22 so far. Save the girl. <laughs> How about save the game? Can Rex Grossman save the Redskins? He'll have that opportunity as the kick from Carpenter to Brandon Banks. And stopped at the 15 yard line. So far, only field goals for the Redskins as they trail here in South Florida. Four fifty two to go in the third quarter and Roy Hallou the running back for Grossman. First down Washington. And the handoff. Hallou across the twenty seven yard line. Maybe one of the better runs of the day. You know, a heck of a block by Fred Davis at, at tight end. Watch Fred. He's to the right of your screen right here. Watch him go get the linebacker. Kevin Burnett, he just locks on. Man, it felt good to tell the straight. <laughs> <laughs> tell the straight. Our, 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 our machine's been out with it. We apologize oh, for man. that. That's a, a good. That's a first down pickup, and I bet it felt good for Roy Hallou, his first carry of the game, and that's what we've seen Terrain and then mix it up a little bit with the rookie from Nebraska. And he stays in. Grossman has it. And behind Gaffney, and incomplete. Checking down on the field with Jamie Maggio. Jamie? Thanks, Chris. Well, you saw Golston was getting a little help coming off the field there. They've got him laying down. They're testing out his uh, flexibility on that left knee. He is able to get up and move around. He's just doing it cautiously. They're still taking, uh, taking their time being cautious with that. They're calling it questionable at this time. Back to you, Chris. Thank you, Jamie, for that injury update. So after no gain, second and 10, oh, with oh. Ballou remaining the back. Terrain carried 10 times for 20 yards. Ready? Incomplete and there's a flag down where Grossman went down and it came in late yeah, Igor Olchansky And Cameron Wake both back there on Rex Grossman There are fouls by both teams on the play holding number 775 offense personal foul Roughing the passer, number 95 defense. Those fouls offset. Repeat second down. Yeah, Cameron Waite got held by Locklear. And then here's the roughing on Igor Olshansky. He's going to come from the right side of your screen, number 95. So Rex delivers the ball, and then there's two and a half steps and a hit. He's trying to hold him up. That had no malice whatsoever, but you have to avoid any contact with force if you can. That's the way the rule reads, and I think Igor Olshansky could have avoided any contact if he wanted to. A break for the Redskins on second down. Grossman's throw. Gaffney has it and goes out of bounds. Let's get a game break and check in with Kurt Benefit. Falcons and Saints fighting for the top spot in the NFC South. Matt Ryan dumping off to Jason Snelling, and Snelling Bowls his way into the end zone through, we count it, nine different Saints for the touchdown. 13-10. Falcons on top of the third quarter. Chris and Tim. Thanks, Kurt, as you look at the standings in the NFC South. And, and it is a low-scoring Sunday. Scoring was down everywhere. Yeah. Defenses are catching up to offenses, Chris, clearly. I mean, look at the number of 300-yard passers that have gone south here in the last few games around the NFL. Third down and incomplete. 
Gaffney was the receiver in the area. There's a flag that comes in late. Boy, did it ever. Gaffney was certainly agitated and irritated. He doesn't even know a flag's been called yet. That was really late. And Jeremiah Bell and Rashad Jones both back there defending. There's no foul for illegal contact on the play. Fourth down. That's what's great. The officials huddle. They make sure and they get it right. Yeah, here's Gaffney, number 10. He's going to get vertical. A yeah, little contact there as, as Jeremiah Bell really just cut off his path and got in front of him. Bell, who has the last three years played every game for the Dolphins and is again doing that this year, consistent in their secondary as Grossman fails on the third down try. Devon Best back to receive the punt from South Rocket between Rocket and Fields. These are two of the better punters in the league, and that's fumbled. Recovered, or muffed, I should say, and recovered by Best. And the Dolphins keep the football. You know, fans of these two teams recall the glory years of the Redskins and the Dolphins. George Allen, Don Shula's perfect team, the no-name defense of the Dolphins. But Gary Premium, the gap that we all remember, the Dolphins, the perfect season Dolphins were underdogs against the Redskins in Super Bowl VII. But with Larry Zonka, they won the game 14-7, to the heyday of the Dolphins and the Redskins and that's what guys like Edwin Pope were writing about the Dolphins and Rick Weaver calling them on the radio Ralph Rennick was anchoring the local news we had a nice conversation with Bob Greasy before the game today who's right next door to us here in the radio booth Reggie Bush oh inside he's yet to get going inside and that's something the last couple of games when he's had the hot hand he has been able to do absolutely has especially against the Giants now he just breaks an ankle on Leron Landry with a, a little hesitation cut wicked there was a secondary defender behind Leron Landry that was able to make the tackle Reggie listen Reggie told us I'm a running back first and, and he's always wanted this opportunity Chris he's relishing this opportunity it hasn't been great for him today, but he says everything else he brings to the table is just a bonus. This guy wants the opportunity to carry the ball 18 to 22 times a game. Since he's come into the league, no running back has more catches. They've thrown to him four times today. That's Devon Bess, short of the first down. And an excellent stop on defense by Arakpo. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's where Brian Arakpo has gotten much better. I remember when he came into the league, high first round pick, I believe number 13 overall out of Texas and he was strictly a pass rusher and I remember doing games then where you know what he's going to be trying to find his way as a pass defender and it certainly was some growing pains early he has certainly excelled and gotten much much better in covering guys that time a very good right runner Devon Best and he was right on him and quick tackle after the catch another two hey. point third down here Dowdy drops way deep into coverage, and Devon Bess has to catch but can't get away. It'll be fourth down for the Dolphins. Kevin Barnes made sure that Bess didn't get near the first down marker. So Brandon Fields will come on to kick his first punt of the day. Clock running here in the third quarter. Now, has this been more about excellent defense or have these offenses been shabby? Uh, I think a little bit of both. Neither one has really been able to run the ball, but look, I'll give the defense credit. They're beating people at the point of attack with their defensive line and linebackers. So, being a defensive guy, I'll give credit to the D's on both sides. <laughs> Fair enough. And the boots from Fields. Brandon Banks had some problems last week. Holds this in cleanly. And goes up the sideline. Finally. The whistle sounds as he gets across the 42 yard line and it was Fields who had to reel him in. Tell you and again talking defense it's been some outstanding edge pressure by these defensive outside linebackers for the Washington Redskins and, and look at the quarterback hits the sacks the tackles for loss and anytime you run Chris a three four defense three down linemen four linebackers. You think of the great Steelers and, and what they were able to do for all of those years and what they're still doing now. You need those outside backers and you need them as elite pass rushers. Arakpo has been the elite pass rusher. 
Ryan Kerrigan certainly finding his way. And what you want five out of those guys, by the end of the year, you want 20 sacks out of them combined. They are well on their way. Miami in its 3-4 defense. Hankerson is open and has a first down catch. His sixth of the game in Dolphin territory. You can get coverage of every NFL game with NFL Mobile. Call star star NFL now. 17-yard completion in the University of Miami third round pick six catches 75 yards today and a nice little bonus that he's able to grow because guess what here in about three weeks they're going to get another University of Miami player back in Santana Moss and with Hankerson's ability to upgrade this offense get Moss back they'll be cooking and they run to Roy Hulu cuts back inside the 37 yard line Niles Paul was injured with a toe problem and of course Santana Moss recovering from that hand injury as well the Redskins trailing by four it's been more field goals here in the second half but the hometown team protecting the lead and that's the end of the third quarter the Dolphins 13 the Redskins 9 Fox NFL Sunday continues after a break from your Fox station Tim Ryan, Chris Myers, our crew from South Florida. Reggie Bush, the only touchdown of the game. The Dolphins trying to win their second game of the year. The Redskins trying to end a four-game slide. And Rex Grossman back in the starting lineup. Trying to do it. On second down, he hands off to Halu. Who gets inside the 35. It'll bring up third down and short. Washington, two of ten when it comes to third down conversion and this game is really really evenly matched neither team has been able to run the ball uh, worth a darn at all uh, third down certainly has favored the Miami Dolphins which is a contrast to what's happened on the year and then the turnovers uh, obviously favor the Redskins but and that being part of the time of possession stuff because of the third yeah. down they're converting that being yeah. Miami they've held the time of possession advantage but very very evenly matched game here it's a long field goal here if Grossman doesn't take a sack Redskins are trying to get two. Go. Hello. Tries, cuts back, falls forward. Oh, I think he got it, Chris. I think he got That's it with that effort. third effort. Absolutely. Because Tony McDaniel is in the backfield. The defensive lineman for the Miami Dolphins, and Hallou is able to avoid him. I'm going to bring the chains out here. And Hallou... Last week at his first NFL start in that game set a team record for catches by a running back with 14 grabs here He's just trying to get a first down. Yeah, I mean, it's just great effort because it looks like he stopped right there And then is able to just surge forward for an extra yard and a half now if you don't get it You got to go for it, right? With the way the wind's been blowing in this direction, <laughs> I'm just trying to put it all together. They're going to get. You won't it, have so to I'm make. You, have won't, to you and decision. Shanahan didn't want to make that decision. So what a run by Roy Hallou! It may have only been a few yards, but those were big yards for Mike Shanahan. And a fresh set of downs for Rex Grossman. And right now they're within field goal range, but this is the west end of the field where both kickers have missed from 49 and 50. I would have kicked. I would have kicked it. You would have. Okay, yeah, you would have. Right? And, and listen. <laughs> Certainly well within his range. They haven't run the ball worth a darn today. I would have kicked it and taken the points with this much time left. Roy Hallou carries. An effort here, but the Dolphins bottle him up. Let's get a game break and check in with Kurt Menefee. Well, a little more successful run than the one you just saw. This time, it's Richard Mendenhall fighting his way in from nine yards out. His second touchdown of the game, it puts the Steelers on top of the Bengals, 24-17, late in the third. Here's some tip. Thanks, Kurt. The Bengals, one of those surprise teams in the National Football League this year. Five consecutive wins for them. Are you kidding me? That AFC North is going to be fun to watch that thing come down to the end. Ready? This division is congested. Ready? Grossman. Incomplete. Cameron Wake, who we haven't said much about today, grabbed the jersey and forced Grossman into getting rid of that. Yeah, they're going to ground. They got to get. They got to get intentional grounding for Rex Grossman. You cannot just throw it away like that with no receiver in the vicinity. No chance. And that's big if that's the call because that moves up a field goal try at the difficult end of the field. 
and he'll be facing third down. Yeah, and they're trying to huddle up and say, was there a receiver in the area? I don't think there was. I didn't see one. Cameron Wake from Beltsville, Maryland, and DeMatha High School. Came in with five and a half sacks and hasn't been much of a factor today for this Dolphin defense. And the back judge, you see him there talking to Carl Jeffers. He's the one that has the best perspective where he is on the back end of the defense, whether or not there was a receiver sitting in the hole. Anywhere near the football that Rex Grossman tries to deliver here. There's no intentional grounding on the play. Receiver number 88 was in the area. Third down. David Anderson the receiver and I, from that picture that view it looked like the right call. Well that that's kind of a didn't give you a real depth perception. How <laughs> close was he to get near that football by Rex Grossman but certainly he flashed there and that looked like where Rex was trying to throw it. These guys have done a good job of huddling up and, and you know getting the things right in terms of after they've thrown some flags. That's a couple of times they've done that today. Pressure is picked up. Grossman has time from the pocket and complete at the 10 yard line. Leonard Hankerson. Boy, what a job by the running back, Roy Halu, in the blitz pickup, Chris. You said it. I mean, the blitz was picked up by the rookie running back. You're going to watch him here. He's to the right in the backfield. Look at him just stiff. The linebacker Kevin Burnett who's coming on pressure and then the deep end cut by Leonard Hankerson nice route Look at him break that route off and then go up and get it man. This cat is impressive Giving uh, this offense a big shot in the arm uh, 22 yard gain as Santana Moss looks on seven catches for Hankerson a career best day so far in the rookie's career As Grossman on first and goal And it's intercepted Carlos Dansby has it That is the Rex Grossman that Redskin fans fear. Today's game is sponsored by Pizza Hut. Right now, get any pizza for just 10 bucks, only at your Pizza Hut. By Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. Carlos Dansby with the interception. The Dolphins today have equaled with two their total interceptions for the year. And the 11th of Dansby's career, the one time Cardinal. <laughs> Dolphins take over. Matt Moore on first down, throwing and completing at the 30 yard line to Brandon Marshall. And let's go back to the interception. What a fabulous play by Carlos Dansby. Staying home in his zone. You're going to see. Here's Dansby right there. Gaffney's going to run an in route, two out routes. Dansby does not take the bait. He just stays right in his zone, little hook zone, and reads the eyes of the quarterback, Rex Grossman, who absolutely has taken a huge snapshot in staring down Gaffney. Look at that. Never takes his eyes off of him. And Dansby, again, just gets the payoff for staying home, understanding the route concept. And look at Rex's eyes here. I mean, he never, ever, he's just waiting for Gaffney to come inside on the double move, never takes his eyes off. And that's the, lack for a better term, the train wrecks that, that right. people in Washington get disappointed with. Uh, Rex is going to keep throwing, though, I promise yeah. you that. Well, they wanted somebody to go downfield. And, and for Dansby, he's the one who told us, look, no mountain is too high if you take that first step. And he was referring to the Dolphins' win over Kansas City, which got the ball rolling. And they seem like a much more confident team as Josh Wilson is the injured player for the Redskins walking off the field getting some applause from the fans the cornerback who will be replaced by Byron Westbrook who will come in to take his spot with D'Angelo Hall on the other side. And there is Westbrook wearing number 34 related to Brian Westbrook the former Eagle and 49er running back. Look, he, he remember the Cardinal game we did early in the year. He knocked that ball out and really was a huge part of winning that game. I believe it was week two, so he is capable of making some plays out there. Reggie Bush, the carry. And the Redskins will throw him for a loss. 
So on the previous down, they come out throwing. That's that aggressive part on offense, protecting the four-point lead. Riley stopping the run. Uh, he's been outstanding today, Chris. You, you think of this Redskin defense, which was really surprising and alarming to me, and it has to be for Jim Haslett, too, coming into the game, their last four losses. They were in these games with the exception of the Buffalo game. 161 yards per game they were given up on the ground. That's awful. They've been outstanding today, and I think Perry Riley. Hey, uh, Chris is hey, going to pick part of it. Two yard loss for Bush. <laughs> Kerrigan coming. He more got rid of it to Clay. Well, we haven't heard from Charles Clay. His first catch of the game. Sixth round draft pick out of Tulsa, who in the last couple of games has been a friendly target for Matt Moore, a tight end H back. Yeah, they like him quite a bit. Nicked up a little bit early in the year. Now, if you're the Dolphins, do you attack Westbrook on that corner with Wilson out of the game? Well, you absolutely take a shot at it for sure. And let's see. I'm going to line Devon Bess up over there on him. On third and eight. Yeah, you got single coverage out there. You definitely, you get some protection here because you take a shot. And that's complete for a first down. Fasano just short of the 45 yard line. And they really use those two receivers they just talked about to clear it out and brought Fasano underneath. Stephen Bowen losing his helmet there after an 11 yard pickup. Matt Moore on target again. So Rex Grossman, who had the Redskins in position on a first and goal. Throws the interception to Dansby, and now the Dolphins are marching the other way. And his second interception today. The first one wasn't his fault. Hankerson fell down. That one certainly was all on, on Rex Gross. Daniel Thomas. The Redskins doing again a great job on the run, and there's Perry Riley on the stop. And that's really the meat of the the Dolphins offensive line. I think Tony Sperano and when you talk about their O line they love Jake Long and his ability to pass protect outside but big pouncy the, the first round pick center in there. You got Richie Incognito the old St. Louis Ram who they love his power inside and then Vernon Carey who was a tackle big huge mammoth of a man playing right guard. That's where they really Chris feel like their power source is. They tried to run behind it. No chance today against the Redskins. High snap and Moore grabs it and throws for Fasano. What a catch! It seems like every time they throw it to him, Fasano, this dude makes circus catches. Look at this one-hander. Goes up and just palms it with one hand over London Fletcher and inside of D'Angelo Hall. That's outstanding. That's the second really good catch for Anthony Fasano in this game. And Matt Moore comfortable throwing down the middle when he gets time. So a 21 yard pickup inside the 35 of the Redskins. <laughs> Thomas. He's just not seeing the hole. That hole was to the left side that time. He's just not seeing it. He's running up right into traffic rather than keeping his eyes open and, and running to the open lanes. He, you know, those plays are designed to cut back, and this could have easily cut back right outside of Richie Incognito. There was a nice crease there, and he didn't see it. The rookie from Hilliard, Florida, still learning his position. Went to three different junior colleges before going to Kansas State. Hole. I know the D tackle did flash in there late in, in Barry Cofield, but if you make that read quick and you plant that foot and go backside, he left some yards on that run to Daniel Thomas. He stays in on second and eight. Matt Moore has it and completes at the 20 to Brandon Marshall. And again, Josh Wilson, the injured corner, went to the locker room for the Redskins. A 13 yard completion, and Marshall is nearing the 100 yard mark for reception yardage. Well, you, you get a certain understanding and a feel for, for Matt Moore and, and his feel of this offense now. When you rewind back to his first start against the Jets in that Monday night game, he was brutal in terms of understanding where to go with the ball and getting it out on time. That hasn't been the case over the last two or three games. Reggie Bush is back in on first down. 
An ankle tackle made by LaRon Landry. And for Marshall, seven catches and 98 yards in the game today. And off the heels of a 100-yard game last week. Over the middle, goes up high. Here he's going to sit down in the hole. Watch, he'll get some yards after the catch on this little quick bubble screen to the outside. Able to break some tackles. Up over the middle, again, going to go up and get it. He has made some big plays today. Almost at 15 yards a catch, which is which is a big number. He was one of those guys, as Reggie Bush said, you know, we've had our in-house squabbles, as any family would have. We're trying to stick together and get wins. As Reggie Bush moving and gets the carry. And cuts inside the 10-yard line. Reggie Bush has a touchdown. Pisano, watch AD's block on Ryan Kerrigan. Look at him hook Ryan Kerrigan. That's the key to the whole block. Now, I know Daniel Thomas gets out and they get some good blocks down the field. Ryan Kerrigan has got to be the guy that gets upfield and sets the edge, forces everything back inside. He couldn't do it because it was an outstanding block by the tight end Pisano, who is huge, Chris, on that scoring drive. With some big catches, an 18 yard touchdown run. And an 11 point lead, Reggie Bush with his second touchdown of the day. Anthony Fasano with a couple of clutch catches and then a big block on Reggie's touchdown. Oh, absolutely was the key block in, in being able to hook the edge. Daniel Thomas had a nice block as well into the boundary. And then Jake Long just downfield about 15 yards, pushing defenders out of bounds. Really good stuff, and Ryan Kerrigan was hot that he gave up the edge. Brandon Banks from his goal line and stopped short of the 18-yard line. Six minutes remaining. Rex Grossman will have to rally the Redskins, who trailed to the Dolphins 20-9. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. And Reggie Bush's excitement after scoring the touchdown, throwing the football into the stands, that's a $5,000 fine from the National Football League. And the Redskins up against it now. Can Grossman rally this team? Wide open is Davis. First down across the 46-yard line. It was the interception by Grossman. Dansby picked it off that allowed the Dolphins to march the other way. Definitely the game changer for sure, as it was a terrific drive, had him down in position. And of course, Fasano able to, on the other way, you know, Matt Moore making some very nice throws on their scoring drive. Down 11 here. This is all about hurry up here in the last five minutes of the game. This is where you love the experience of Rex Grossman. Roy Halu out of the back Get out of bounds. And he does not, and he stops short of the 40. That's a rookie mistake. Okay. You, you love the fact you're trying to pick up extra yards. If you walled off with defenders, work it to the sideline, get yourself out of bounds. Another the quarterback. 15 yard penalty added to the end of the play. Automatic. First down. Got a roughing the passer call and did not get the clear number. Uh, I believe it was Audric. Oh no, it was yeah, it was Audric from the back. Right. Uh, Starks down low, Audric from the backside. Now is that really a roughing the passer? Didn't look like it to me unless he hit him in the back of his helmet with his helmet, but that looked like a weak call. Well, it pushes the Redskins all the way inside the 45 of Miami. All three timeouts remaining. They need two scores. They set up the screen to Roy Hallou, who's dancing inside the 40 and now to the. 36 and a half yard line of Miami. Yeah, keep your eye on that clock down 11. It's all about, as I said, getting to the line of scrimmage, getting the place spit out as fast as you can if you're Rex Grossman. And here's where the veteran quarterbacks do their work. I don't know why they're huddling up here. You talked about the experience of Grossman with some of the young players on this team. That's why he's starting instead of John. Bro, bro, bro. And maybe that's why they're huddling up with Leonard Hankerson out there. But you got a 10 year veteran and Jabbar Gaffney. You got this thing and, and Halu being a rookie. This thing's got to work. Hurry up the line of scrimmage. Grossman has time. The ball's batted. 
And false down incomplete. Stops the clock with 4.18 to go, and it's third and four. And looked like Jason Taylor got his arms up, tipped that ball. Yeah, he's going on Trent Williams out of here, right end on left tackle. That's absolutely what happened. Jason Taylor just reading the quarterback, and you hear me say it all the time that non throwing hand comes off. The cue, the ball's coming out. Get your hand up. It's a big play by Jason Taylor. They need four on third down, and they get it. Reaching for it up at the 30 yard line and making the catch. And now he's rolling in pain as Leonard Hankerson. Leonard Hankerson, the University of Miami product, the injured player. Leonard Hankerson with more than 50 friends and family watching him here, walking to the sideline off of the injury. Yeah, he's been outstanding, and it's to his right leg, and you can see what happens here. Rashad Jones up on his back. Watch the next step he takes with his right leg. Right here, just gets it out in front of him and awkwardly comes down on it. Glad he was able to get off and walk under his own power. Eight catches, 106 yards for Leonard Hankerson, who's out of the game on first down for the Redskins. Grossman. Bad and incomplete. Carlos Dansby is having a terrific game. Now, there was nobody open down the field because Dansby was picked up by Roy Halu initially. Halu is locked up with him in protection. Rex is just trying to get out and throw the ball away, and, and Dansby's able to get the bat down. Those two backers, I'll tell you what, you look at the two linebackers, Dansby and Burnett, over the last two weeks, certainly Dansby much more today. He's been on fire. It's changed the pace of this Miami defense, and Jason Taylor in his 197th regular season game as a Dolphin, second on the all-time list, ahead of Bob Kuchenberg and right behind Dan Marino. And there he is. Jason Taylor. And it does not come at a bigger time than in this game. Man, you are all over it. You, you talk about somebody, they make a play. What's going on with you? Spot Watch him on Trent Williams here on the edge. And again, they're down in the scoring zone. Look at the inside move. They do a fan protection, which means Williams gets to the outside. Maurice Hurd, the rookie left guard, is responsible for bl blocking Jason Taylor. He had no chance on the big-time veteran right there. That is really, really good stuff. Briefly a redskin, his 135th and a half sack. All here comes pressure. pressure. There's a flag down. Grossman's down. Side, number 98 defense five-yard penalty repeat third down oh man that is a huge penalty because that is what pushes them way out of the field goal position field goal range Mike Nolan just sends more than they can block I talked about it early Mike Nolan's gonna overload blitz and say look we're just sending extra guys and they're gonna come right up the gut nobody to block Rashad Jones nobody so Jared Audrick wasn't even a factor on the rush. And he's the one that gets called offside. That's a critical error. So he gets third and 12. Now, if they miss this, we'll watch. You, you still need two scores so they can kick a field goal if they make it from the outside kick. They got to pick up some extra yards here to get in field goal position. That's what they're thinking. Incomplete. Terrence Austin was the target. That ball hit him right in the chest, didn't it? Fourth down, and Jason Taylor is back there in coverage. And that, that ball, that was a well-thrown ball from Rex Grossman under duress. So Graham Gano, who missed from 50 at this end of the field earlier, but has been good on three other tries. And clearly the right call, down two scores. He kicked the field goal, down eight, get an onside kick, and hopefully get a touchdown and a two-point conversion to, to tie this thing up. It's a 49-yard attempt for Graham Gano. The kick. No. For Gano.
So the field goal game failing for the Redskins. Leonard Hankerson, who's had an outstanding day, headed to the locker room for the Redskins. Josh Wilson returns from the locker room in the secondary, and Graham Gano with two misses. And both in that direction, Chris, and both hooked left. You know, if you live by the field goal, and if your offense, if that's all yeah. you can muster. Well, you know what? Rex had really one bad play today. Otherwise, I thought he's really played good in this game. But at the end of the day, it's only nine points up on the board. And Reggie Bush with his two touchdown runs, trying to run the clock down now for the Dolphins. And we have a timeout. Washington has two remaining. Let's get a game break and check in with Kurt Butterfield. Well, just a reminder that America's Game of the Week has something for everyone. If you like the ground game, Frank Gore will try to run it against the Giants, while through the air, Calvin Johnson will try and get it done against the Bears. No matter your taste, you'll flip for America's Game of the Week. Coming your way when you guys are done there in Miami, Chris and Tim. Thanks, Kurt. Some amazing matchups. Are people Incredible. overlooking the Bears? By yeah, the way? they are. The Bears have won three consecutive games, and they have got their offensive line shored up. Look, hey. Nick Forte's got the most yards from scrimmage in the National Football League. He'll give the Lions all they can handle. Tonight. Rex Grossman, of course, led the Bears to a Super Bowl and unable to lead the Redskins out of the hole that they've been in today. Daniel Thomas carries. And Matt Moore came up big when he had to with some clutch throws as the Redskins take uh, their second timeout and the Redskins will have one remaining and now if if they don't pull off a miracle here look at this schedule coming up yeah I told you it's brutal now you, you think Seattle they're not very good that's a long trip out to the Northwest Dallas is surging right now the Jets are playing really good football New England's been in a bit of a funk but we know what kind of firepower they have and the Giants have won six to seven games so this look this one really really hurts if the Redskins end up going down here against the team and the Miami Dolphins who have one victory in the first half of the season and Rex Grossman steadier but the same results Mike Shanahan will deal with his first yeah you know what Look, it's a team game we understand that and, and Rex had a bad interception down in scoring position I, I thought he was really good today I'll give him a lot of credit Matt Moore keeps for a first down and stays in bounds and on the other side, let's give that guy some credit. AFC Player of the Week last week, and we did against Kansas City. It's been a career backup. Watch this fake. Had everybody faked out. It's all the guys to the right. Three tight ends out there. Get the Redskins playing the run, and that more hides it, and then smart enough to stay in bounds and keep the clock ticking. And stepped right in. It up. Chad Henney injured that shoulder against San Diego as we near the two-minute mark. He's working through and rehabbing. Out for the remainder of the season, this is Matt Moore's team. Two minutes remaining here in South Florida. Rex Grossman, 21 out of 32 with two interceptions with two minutes to go. The Dolphins. Daniel Thomas, they are that far away from their second win of the season. There is a flag down. Third and final charge timeout. Washington, a 30-second timeout. All right, so let's see what the flag is about. As we also have a timeout down on the field. Yeah, you got to be happy for that guy, Tony Sperano, right there. Of course, Dan's be the hero in this one with the big Correction, interception. There's no charge timeout on the play. Personal foul. Face mask, number 30. Defense, 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. So Jeffers, Carl Jeffers clears things up for us as Laurent Landry has called for the penalty. So don't count the timeout and the Dolphins move forward. And, and you know what? It wasn't just the interception for number 58 there, Carlos Dansby, who's having a good old time cutting a rug over there on the on the side. Look at that move by Wake. Oh yeah, there you go, Daddy. You know, and Mike Nola, the defensive coordinator, talked about guys. He said when you're when you're not winning, sometimes players tend to go individual. Hey, I'm worried about just doing my thing. They pulled together the last two weeks. Yeah, they're playing their best football. They are an ascending team. We talked about it. And Dansby, not only the pick, had a sack, oh, had nine or ten tackles. The guy was everywhere for the Dolphins yes. defense. Thomas inside the 20 Daniel Thomas and the Dolphins at one time winless on their way to their second straight the Colts remain winless as they lost today 
to Jacksonville, and that is the final timeout for the Washington Redskins. Today's game is a Mike Burks production directed by Tom Yoe, the associate director Brian Biederman, broadcast associate Matt Saldana. Mark Sosna helps out with graphics and sweeps up the truck. John Branco, an old uh, South Florida television hand, helping us up in the booth along with Emmett McGuire and our spotter James Petralco. And whenever I make a mistake, James is the guy you blame, the spotter, right? It's his fault. <laughs> Frank Phillips, our tech manager, we appreciate his help uh, with the crew and all the uh, the guys and girls who work so hard every weekend to bring you the best in the National Football League. Thomas will carry and bring up third down. And the doubleheader continues with the Giants and 49ers, the Lions and Bears. America's Game of the Week on Fox. And next week, the, the Dolphins, will, with, a, with a winning streak, will face the Buffalo Bills, the Bills who get smashed today by the Cowboys. Yeah, the Cowboys are, are finding their way for sure. It was fun being there last week. And, and then and then the Dolphins go to Dallas on Thanksgiving. That's right. It's a big game. How about the, the Fox game on Thanksgiving? You kidding me? That one's going to be Lions, and Packers. Lions well, and, and Packers. Dolphin fans would be interested, Tim, since the Packers are the only unbeaten team, and it comes up every time a team hits a certain point of the season. Well, I know what kind of chance on third and one as Thomas fails to get the first down. What kind of chance you give the Packers well, to run the I, table? I, I give them a great chance. I, I think that it's not going to be easy. I mean, they got some very difficult games left. But the way Aaron Rodgers is playing the quarterback position right now, and the way he's distributing the ball, and, and he's just almost flawless. Every week he's giving you 110 rating. He is a true superstar. And when you have that at that position, the most important position, and the hardest position, in my opinion, to play in pro sport, you got a shot every week to, to run the table. And for the Redskins, Mike Shanahan, I guess he'll stay with Rex Grossman, but their future quarterback, a major question mark. Yeah, definitely. And I would certainly stick with Rex based on his performance today. And on fourth and one, Dolphins with the clock running. Of course, the question mark at quarterback for Miami beyond this season, something Matt Moore is trying to help answer. There's his offensive coordinator, uh, coordinator, excuse me, Brian Dayball, who that's got to feel good. I mean, these guys grind. You can't imagine the grinding hours, whether you're winning or losing, but the time spent in the office and trying to get it right. 53 guys on the roster, the guys on the practice squad, every coach, every trainer, every manager. And Tony Sperano said it. Look, he, he's been waiting seven weeks. He said it last week for to see his guy with a smile, his guys with a smile on their face. He gets it two weeks in a row. Hard work paid off. Love to see it. So they're out of the quicksand, the Dolphins, as Reggie Bush put it. They're climbing the mountain, as Carlos Dansby put it. And on first down for the Redskins. Across the 40 as the clock ticks down. 3 2 1. Blast off Miami. Back to back wins for the Dolphins. Reggie Bush with a couple of touchdowns for Tim Ryan. I'm Chris Myers. Thanks for watching the NFL on Fox. Thank you.